now we have a good understanding of how Razer Pages can help us with authentication and authorization and we have our forms in place. So now we need to actually implement those features. In this app, Identity will work together with Entity Framework, which means that we need a data context. If you don't know what that is, there is a link to a tutorial for absolute beginners in Entity Framework in the description below. So here I'm going to create the data context file in the data folder. So our context will inherit from the identity DB context, which is different from the DB context that we usually have for Entity Framework. And I'm explicitly declaring its constructor because it's going to take this DB context options object as a parameter. Then we have a bit of work to do in the program.cs file, which is the starting point for our app. First, we're going to declare a connection string that will be populated from the app settings.json file. Then I'm going to register my data context. And notice that I'm using the add db context factory as opposed to add db context. And that's the recommended approach in Blazor since the factory is responsible for creating instances of the database context when needed instead of creating just one instance for the lifetime of the application. That's the recommended approach when we need components that require short-lived instances, which is the case in our app. Then I'll call a method to register my identity services using the default implementation of identity user and identity role, which will be necessary if you want to add role-based authentication. And we can add several types of configuration to this registration. And I'll just add a few here that are pretty much self-explanatory. And in the last line, we're calling this add any framework stores so that we can integrate the identity system with anti framework to handle our authentication and authorization. Now I'm going to add some code to make sure that every time we start our application, the database and the tables will be created if they don't exist. And they are created based on the models we have in our app, which means that we don't need to create migrations. And that makes the development process much faster. And we're doing this inside a using statement block that creates a new scope. And that's how we are accessing a service registered in a dependency injection container. And the using statement makes sure that this resource is disposed of once it's used. And last but not least, I need to add the call to two methods. So these are pieces of what we call middleware, and that's essentially components or services that intercept and process each request and response. So it's a key piece of the equation when we are dealing with web development. And they need to be in this order because authorization relies on the user's identity, which we can only know during the authentication process. With all of that in place, if we run the app, we should have our database created along with our identity tables. So the app is working as before, but if we examine our SQL Server Manager, we can see that all the tables related to identity were created. And if this is your first time dealing with identity, you might be a little bit confused, asking yourself why were these tables created and where was the code for it. But to summarize, identity is a system that comes straight out of the box for the management of authorization and authentication. And it comes with a lot of functionalities that will cater for the needs of all sorts of organizations of all sizes. So for our application, we're only going to use the users table. But for bigger organizations that use identity, most of these tables would be used. And identity provides a great starting point. But let's continue. Let's see how we can actually register and log in a user. So back in the register code behind, we need to bring in a couple of services using dependency injection, and we need to initialize them using our constructor, 
So we're going to say that if the model state is valid, and the model state represents the model validation, the is valid boolean is determined when a form is submitted. And if in this form the validation doesn't fail, this boolean will be true. So if there are no validation issues, we're going to declare a new identity user object. And at this stage, just using two properties, the username, which will be our mail, and the email, which will also be our email. And we're going to pass this object into this create async method in the user manager. So we're creating a new user using the identity user object and also passing a password. So if we succeed, the sign in manager comes into the picture and the user is logged into the application. And we are setting this is persistent parameter as false which means that this user session won't persist. So next time the user navigates into this address, they will have to log in again. And I'm doing this just for the sake of this tutorial, but it's up to you if you want to use that in your app. So we log the user in and redirect it to the root of the app. And outside of this code block, if the model state isn't valid, none of that happens and we just return the page itself. So let's run the app and submit the registration form. We put a breakpoint on line 23 and we pass the validation. So we are going to create the identity object and call the create async method. And if there are no issues, the user will be logged in. So let's see in our table if the user was created. And we can see that my email is there with all the corresponding data. And if we continue, we can see that the user now has the access to the protected area. Now, if we open Chrome's DevTools and open applications and cookies, we can see that the cookies for this user session are available. So we're going to clear those cookies to see what happens. And if we navigate into our root address again, now we are not authenticated anymore. We need to log in again since our session is based on cookies. And of course, if we do try to log in again, nothing happens since we haven't implemented the code behind for the login. So let's do that. In the login page, we also need to have some services injected. So the code for this injection is very similar to the register model. Then in the onPost async method, if the validation doesn't fail, I'm going to call the password sign in async method in the sign-in manager, passing the email, the password, also setting the persistence to false and lock out on failure to false. If the result is a success, then I redirect to the root. And if the validation fails, I return the page. So let's try to log the user in and see what happens. The form auto-completes and all I have to do is to click on login and the user session starts. And I just noticed that we can get rid of this user manager service since we're not using it. And now let's implement the logout. We're going to try and log out from a Blazor component. So you can see it's possible even though it's not recommended. So for this, I'm creating a new Razor view empty since we don't have a lot of code behind. And I'm going to set a few directives to it. So I have the page directive. I have a using statement for the identity. This anti-forgery token is a security feature that helps to protect against cross-site attacks, but it's okay to skip it when we're not dealing with sensitive information which is the case of the logout. Then we're going to inject the sign-in manager into this view. And we're going to write some C-sharp code right here in this file. We're going to call the onGet method, 
and if the user is signed in we're going to sign it out and the code for this is self-explanatory So let's see if we can log the user out. If we navigate to the logout URL, the user is logged out. So let's add navigation to that URL to our nav menu. So we're going to duplicate this nav link and change the code so that it applies to the logout. And we're changing the icon, which comes from the open iconic library that ships with Blazor. So if you want to use different icons, you can search for the class in the open iconic website. And of course, we need to add the reference to the logout URL. So let's try it. And we can see that the logout button works fine. So that's it. We have configured authentication and authorization for this app. We went a little bit slow so that you could understand everything that was going on, but you can literally copy and paste this solution to implement in your own applications. With a little bit of practice, you can create this system in a matter of minutes. But of course, this doesn't handle a lot of really complex scenarios, such as when we want to add custom data to our users. And we're also not touching on role-based authentication just yet. But it's a good starting point if you haven't used identity before. In the next lesson, let's work with Blazor so we can create the CRUD functionality for our employee management system.